This degenerate gotcha went insane from Mr. Jinazad. More gotcha related news. Give it to me. One day I was perusing the gotcha game subreddit as I perusing. usually do to see some of the worst opinions <laughs> known to mankind. Bad, and I stumbled upon <laughs> What is this? Gotcha smack? Mr. Pokey? US and Fortnite? I've seen seen it in the cryptic dreams. <laughs> Live reaction, M Tashed and Mr. Pokey. Bad, and I stumbled upon an interesting post about a game I had never okay. heard of called Orisri. Bro, this looks so that's Lakari's Oris. Oh, have you Scott, have you guys seen this one? What, what is this? What the f What in the f was that? <laughs> this post described a game that was male player oriented, multiplayer mm. PvP. I mean, what gotcha isn't male player oriented, but they're specifically making a hentai gotcha. <laughs> Where you pull characters, train yeah. them, assemble an army, take land, and cool. battle on a giant world map for glory. Oh, and it's also an NTR hentai game from NTR hentai, not any NTR one. Taiwanese devs. And if you watched my previous video, you'll know that that was kind of a crazy time to be releasing something like this. So basically, it's a simulation war game where when your heroes and armies are defeated, they mm. can sometimes be captured by the enemy and their <laughs> You're taking prisoners? You taking prisoners of war? What are you doing to them? Dungeon and uh, yeah. well, you get cucked. There's even rewards. For so hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. But like, you like when you play these booby games, you want to see those cutscenes. You want to see, you know, your wife was get blasted. But the whole concept of this is, you need to first lose, right? You need to lose. So that your enemies will take your waifu, so that then the cutscene will play. So it's just an, it, it, I mean, it did say NTR, right? So what about if you win? If you want to take their waifus, do you get to do the cucking, right? To be NTR or to not be NTR'd? for this where you not only deny the opponent using their hero for a time since they're busy but <laughs> you also get items that can be used to raise the affection of your characters right now, this alone wouldn't have gotten me to play the game since all right there's plenty of hentai games that have been made i've never played one before because mm, i never. have plenty of options <laughs> it's back up though right oh no it's well, up, buckle though. up, because this game has a catch. While it does have many attractive females, it also has male characters. Okay. That's right. I'm sure you can see where this is going. You can also capture the opponent's men in your dungeon. And Okay. I mean, it's a male-centric game, but I mean, I'm not gonna assume that gay people don't play this but i don't think they're like the target audience though is it well let's just say love in deep space is popular for it <laughs> turns out in the beta of this game yeah. players did not want to get ntr'd so instead of sending their wife wait 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 they <laughs> remember gotcha players cannot holy shit what are these ads gotcha players do not want their favorite waifus in game interacting with other dudes in game, right? They don't want it to be cooked. So, in order to save their waifus from getting cooked, they they send their their dudes. But like conceptually, that's hilarious. It's like, all right, I'm gonna send my strongest men to the enemy base. You're gonna go to the sex dungeon now. All right, be. I'll see you guys in three days. Foos into battle, they sent their men. A lot of men. <laughs> Giant man on man gotcha battles started taking place where they Like a new meta started. That's that's actually hilarious because, like, it's supposed to be waifus, but then <laughs> the subconscious uh, cuckoldry of fucking uh, gotcha players is making a bunch of meta of like a bunch of dudes going and getting captured. So now what is it? Would capture each other in the dungeon. All hmm. of this together effectively turned what was supposed to be a waifu game yeah. into a gay Husbanda. hentai. All right, now you have my attention. Okay. After reading this post, I found the pre-registration page where you could pre-register and sure. get a guild before release, which is a neat feature actually. I named my guild Ugly NTR. Bastard NTR. Nice. Tag NTR. And somehow, I had 130 people from my chat instantly fill the slots, while if I do a sponsorship for money, I get about three sign-ups. So, uh, <laughs> glad my community's down for once. Also, if you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll be making more videos. Already like did! So I began this game for the absurdity of the idea of this game as a joke. 
Countless hours and four hundred dollars later, I come to you, a changed, enlightened man. This game is not only barely known by anyone, but also mostly in Chinese, causing there to be almost no information online. Not even an Indian teaching video. So let me break it down. You need to at least have gotten a PhD in mathematics to understand the average combat log. Okay. Diplomacy between nations in this game is taken more seriously than in real life between politicians. Trust no one. Spies enter guilds or discord groups to get information to feed to their homeland. A leader must be able to command at least a hundred people in their guild and make multiple battlefronts at once, while strategy must be used to protect and build guild forts to extend your army's reach. Characters have entire skill trees with stats that- <laughs> This is way too much. I just want to see my waifus and husbandos get cucked in dungeons. Seemingly make no sense how they actually operate or what each point is actually doing with so little understanding of how combat really works. Yeah. You spend thousands of dollars to become strong? Three low-level rats outmaneuver you, tiring out your armies before they can even fight. You brought an infantry troop into the wrong oh, unit? Shit. Dead. You brought your strongest team with your best unit composition possible? Your hero missed a 40% proc chance. Looks like... The game is pretty deep in terms of the mechanics of everything that Jenajad is kind of explaining. So beyond just this waifu husbando bait where they get captured and put into a sex dungeon, like maybe the mechanics are deep enough to enjoy the game. Ten times in a row and got stunned, defeated, and is now in your opponent's sex uh -oh. dungeon. Enjoy that eight hours of sleep you just got? In that eight hours, another nation just attacked your stronghold, took it, destroyed all your forts, and took a third of your nation's land. This is the amazing game of Orisha. Alia. Probably the hardest gacha game I've ever played, but also one of my favorites. Maybe really? Gachas are rare, as the average gacha player can't really handle not being number one in their own personal bubble or have any real chance of failure. But in this game, you can get your entire nation wiped out and your waifus captured pitifully, waiting hmm. for the end of the season so you can try again. There are six major nations of Orisries. Shen Zhao, which represents China. Izumonokuni, which is Japan. Utopia, which oh, is Russia. The damn. Republic of Aaron, which is some of Europe. The Holy Church, which is the Vatican. The Holy Church is pretty great, huh? Vatican and the Kingdom of Mist, which is the land of the free. Yeah, I like the elves and I like the, the church. America, brother. I, of course, chose the Utopia Nation, which represents my Comrades. true motherland. Living in the harsh, snowy wilderness, we've become something more than common men. And with copious amounts of rock and iron, a strong industrial industry. However, due to scorched earth tactics, we have no food, and so our people starve. I simply fight for my comrades is, and our- This is so immersive right now. I'm, I'm just going through a fucking trip. Like, I thought I were just gonna get gotcha booba news going on, but the in-game mechanics are pretty deep. There's like a pretty fleshed out system beyond just the sex dungeon and now the lore regarding each factions glorious leader Ooh. holy well how That's about big. the cash shop as every mobile game normally shoves us in your face with a bro said he dropped 400 dollars already 100 pop-ups and buy 1000 percent value pack now yeah, 10 hours that. left somehow this game is less pay to win than most pvp gotchas i've played as you can't okay. buy boosts for stamina or getting troops faster which are the most important things just hmm. characters and gear pulls mostly which an army of rats can actually outplay there's also two ingenious things in this game innovations of the gotcha genre that i've never seen before such as first is after you buy the monthly pass, this little special tab appears for lifetime a lifetime pass. pass. <laughs> so instead of like a monthly battle pass, you can get a lifetime. Do you have to purchase once and it's forever? Or is it like an ongoing thing? With a pull and extra currency every day. As I know, I'm a coomer for life. It was an instant purchase. Okay. I mean, $50. All right. $50. So... Let's think about this. Uh, the equivalent of this might be just like the monthly passes that you might get. Like, not even battle pass, but thinking about like the monthly like $5 purchases you get from like Genshin or Honkai Star Rail or Wuthering Waves, you know? The most like um, efficient in terms of money spent and resources gotten. Let's assume like 10 months of that. Average tenure in a gacha game probably doesn't even go 10 months for the average player. So this lifetime pass... Probably pretty smart. Captures the audience thinking, holy shit, it's forever without knowing. They'll probably, most people buying this shit probably won't even play like 10 months to get the full value out of it. But in terms of like business practices and capturing like a fear of missing out and ma making people think that it's like a good deal, it's pretty smart. The second is anti-cuck protection. $10. <laughs> 
Wait, you, wait, do you get given like a chastity belt or for, for like your wife who's like I put in a dungeon? You can buy this cool little item where your waifu cannot ever be captured by the yeah. enemy for the rest okay. of the season. Wow. This singular purchase will make them more money than every Concord copy sold would. Uh, that's not too hard to do, but that is actually pretty genius. This whole system of not wanting to get your waifu cucked and having like a fucking item that you buy so your waifu doesn't get blasted in the sex dungeon. Uh, would you rather protect four of your waifus from the lustful enemy commander or purchase one dog? I sure Ugh. as hell ain't using these to protect <laughs> However, my enemy should definitely purchase these because Sun Tzu once said, mm. It is easy to love your friend, but sometimes what? the hardest lesson to learn is to love your enemy. And mm. so I have taken this to heart and I like to love my enemy very much. Next, let's talk. That's, that's a lot. That's, that's a, I wonder what exactly happens in the dungeon though. There's also a term named exile. <laughs> the exile doesn't mean return the girl, does it? I don't know. But like, okay, you captured them. And there's like, and you click on each logo, and there's like a little. Uh, it's not an animation, but you know, you get to see just image of them just captured. But is there any cutscenes that you get to see? Very much. Next, let's talk about the community. Which <laughs> is it going to be worse than the Blue Archive community in terms of comments and how down bad it is? Let's see. Community, which is probably one of the best in all of Gotcha Game. <laughs> Wuwa is bad game because it gave me cheese leopard. I think this is the uh the kid, right? The tiger kid who is like the worst rated tier unit in like a standard polls. First of all, almost every single player only speaks Chinese and lives across the entire planet, but we're all connected on a much deeper spiritual level that sure. transcends language by a collective sense of being coomers. They even have a neat translation tool so you can see what people on the other side of the world say. Oh, really? Neat. However, there was a time- Wait, wait, what did I say? What did I say? She has feet? Hold up. The world yes. thing. Neat. She has feet and happened to have a mouth. And I happen to have a mouth. <laughs> They're all a bunch of senseis, bro. It says Blue Archive Enjoyers. However, there was a time where the translation tool accidentally translated someone excited about Black Myth Wukong hmm. as a racist paragraph who Jesus. was then reported and complained in all chat. Beta players for Eurisseries would also actually help others in all chat or in Discord as well. Some would even set up forts as brothels for <laughs> trading characters to one another to unlock brothels bro this game system is just i don't know if the developers ever like intended for this all to happen but it but but if it didn't then it's just all happening spontaneously after just a bunch of coomers banding together it's pretty fun the hentai scenes essentially self-cucking themselves when the game began self-cucking themselves no 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 they're pimps bro and they're handing out their waifus to other people it's a good business and every English speaker was in Russia, as we were all comrades. But eventually, beta players of Rissies all chose America and began to take over the entire world for oil. They spread across the entire map, taking every stronghold, and nobody could fight back as they had advanced so quickly with their superior knowledge and teamwork. But then, a great schism occurred, uh -oh. and some of their army changed nations to Europe to even the odds and fight back. Deep-seated betrayal and hatred existed between the two, and both would often contact us to screw one another over. I didn't really know Literally? players would get this mad over a hentai gacha game, but okay. However, one hero joined our nation who mostly spoke Chinese. He Who changed his name to Pronoun, as he knew that that's all English speakers care about now. And he taught us everything we know. He turned a nation of savages into modern men. He became... This dude sounds like a fucking isekai main character. Our king. Let's finally talk about how this game actually worked. Right. <laughs> okay, so what do we know about this game? Different factions, a lot of booba. Uh, you win, you take their people into your sex dungeon, and then coom. Now what? What's the actual game, though? So when you first look at the game, it might look like one of those trashy mobile game ads that yeah. you once got tricked into downloading, where it was so absurd you had to see it for yourself, and then it's actually some garbage city builder pay-to-win game. But yeah, to be honest, those mobile game ads do actually look way more fun than the actual gameplay. It's kind of crazy how they could just literally make a game that's advertising that would do way better than randomly fucking baiting.
Garbage City Builder pay to win game. But Eurysteries is nothing like that, however it does have the similar features of having to upgrade your buildings and train troops. You send your legions out into the wilderness to capture land for resources and can only move to adjacent spaces you or your allies have captured. You also have stamina for every hero, causing you to actually have to split your forces to cover more ground over time. Every okay. space has a battle where after you win, you obtain the land and it becomes truced an unattackable space for five minutes from foes. From these battles, your heroes gain levels and gain more talents and skill points. If you're lucky, you may even capture a male prisoner in your dungeon male. like Li Bingshan. As you level your armies, you can have more troops, which are broken into categories of cavalry, ranged, or infantry, and either physical or magic damage dealers. Troops can be the main DPS of your army, or they can okay. buff the leading hero to become your main DPS, or even be tanks to soak the team damage. Also, you can only move so far out of range of your main base, and you need to build fortresses to extend your range. All of this combines to make the game a gradual takeover the entire world map, with strongholds as one of the most important areas to take. And what Holy shit, this looks so fucking in-depth and cluttered. I don't know if I... I don't know, just visually, it doesn't really look eye-capturing, but this is simply the zoomed out... I don't know what... I don't know what happens, actually, if you go into each building and actually fight stuff, but... I wasn't always the biggest fan of just, like, huge games like this. ...causes most wars between countries. Somehow this reasoning for war makes more sense than any in the 21st century. As the season progresses, new chapters open up which add effects to the game such as extra experience gain or unlocking the most important capture point, the Sanctum of Genesis, which is the goal of the game and where all of the world's pirated anime is stored now. While this all sounds simple, truly understanding it makes a difference. At one point, we had a war with America for five days straight, non-stop fighting around the clock, 24 That's hours so a day. Sweaty. The Ice Bloom Stronghold. Some players said they only slept for three hours at a time because then they'd wake up and they'd start fighting more once they're. Well, I did, this is an actual fucking job to them. Like, holy shit. Stamina and troops were covered. Every time our Kirito. God King pronoun would move, the enemy would scatter like bugs, afraid of his power. He really is a fucking Isekai MC, bro. He just shows up. The Chinese guy with the name pronoun, it just truly is their savior. Afraid of his power and wallet. Over a million troops died in this war, actually making it more oh, deaths no. in this video game than the entire American Civil War. While America is powerful and also had whales, we employed guerrilla tactics and used non-stop rat armies to stall them. Rat armies were singular heroes with small troop numbers that could dominate taking land quickly and efficiently. Even though one whale could beat anyone in a straight on fight, three rats could take every adjacent space so they couldn't move without wasting all their stamina. That's actually kind of nice how there's like an incentive for free to play players or people that's not whales to actually provide value without feeling like they're w not wasting their time. If a unit spends five minutes walking to a space, you can just take the space they were moving to or the connecting land. And since they can't attack anymore, they just walk back like a moron, wasting all their time and stamina. We became the Rat Legion. NTR, the ugly bastard NTR, Utopia. Outmaneuvering our foes and wearing them out. Eventually, however, their superior numbers and wallets definitely beat us back. The stronghold was lost, and they began to encroach our inner land and attempt to take a tunnel to the mainland. However, the leaders of each nation eventually came to a truce, as coming to close to a week of players non-stop- <laughs> Our game also got a nickname, Cuckold Simulator. Playing a hentai game at school or even work and staying up at night just to contribute to the war effort got a little bit out. But I, I think that games like this does a really good job in having everyone want to participate. It's like a movement. It's like something that you don't want to miss out on. Even if this game not be the next level gaming, like nothing crazy, having like a sense of community and having feeling like you're just part of some big thing. And, and war at such a great scale. Yes, it's silly that it's just, you know, anti booby games and you're trying to capture people and put them in a sex dungeon, but there's something compelling about that. You feel like you're part of something and you definitely want to, like, stay up all night and just, like, grind or with your team of comrades. So I can definitely relate to this. Work and staying up at night just to contribute to the war effort got a little bit out of hand. And if everyone really needed a break to actually catch up on their lives, the Cold War had begun. By the end of the season, eventually everyone just set up a giant brothel XP trade hub in the only land in the game that cannot be owned, a neutral zone. Players spend their days counting down the season by self-cucking themselves by- 
These comments are insane. These. <laughs> like. <laughs> It, 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 it has to be all of those blue archive enjoyers. Sending troops to other people's. <laughs> Cut off your what? Itchy? What's itchy? Sports or vice versa. And we wait for a new battlefield and new allies to meet. I look back on my fond memories of the season. I've connected with people across the globe who don't even speak English in a hentai game. Found friends among them. Even some of them watched my stream and would talk and chat wow. using translators. I entered this game expecting gooners, but I found a Friends. gooner family. I hope you enjoyed this video a bunch. Thanks. For now, this video was very interesting in explaining a ridiculous gotcha game that has to do with just NTR. And you, you and the whole meta was created because they didn't want their waifus to get cucked. So they started sending dudes in. And then beyond that, it's like a pretty in-depth system where whaling doesn't just get you ahead and a bunch of people can band together as free-to-play rats and occupy and you know help out the team and actually feel part of a movement and by doing so right you had this huge huge season where everybody was partaking in this beautiful gooning movement and felt like they're part of a family so i think this is a pretty great video and storytelling just to tell genocide's experience playing this NTR, the sex dungeon game, but that's pretty much it for me. I don't know what the hell that I was getting myself into. I'm not so sure that I would play this game, but just hearing about these heartfelt, you know, stories of a bunch of people that don't even know how to speak together, just bonding over the same common thing. It's pretty beautiful here. Here's the link for the video. Please go check out Mr. Genesis' channel if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.